So here's the design on the Fusion 360 from one of those low poly designs. And there are two main workflows to create these low poly designs. Um, this one has a, a few problems. It doesn't convert. But now it has this ghosted image of it being converted once, but not again. Um, let me get to that in a moment. So here's that design in Fusion 360. It's actually very neat what this user tries to do but he's been running into a few problems. Let's hide the canvases and take a look at the model. So I can already see a couple of problems here. Um, take a look at this phase and this phase. Uh, this the larger phase should actually terminate right here. They should share that vertex, but they, they don't. So uh, same as for this phase here. So let's delete these. Um, then there are internal phases. And if you want this, to ever convert, you cannot really have internal faces. Um, basically, you have you have an edge sharing more than two surfaces. So we don't need that. And I think I deleted something on the rear side that I didn't want to delete, but this one also needs to go. That's also an internal face that we don't need. And I'm also going to get rid of this one here. And there are the you know if if I un if I undelete it again and use undo, you can see that we have internal phases here as well, so I need to delete those. Those are also not needed. And actually, this, uh, this phase and this phase share this vertex. So basically, this is also not a, a quad. This is a five-sided polygon. Uh, then there are many triangles here. And for low poly model, that's actually OK. Uh, for a regular T-spline, you better avoid any triangles. Model with quads or with five-sided polygons, but better is quads. So what I'm going to do now is to simply fill those faces back in with real faces. Oh, I started there. I picked that on the lower side here. And this one. Did I forget one? I did forget one. And I'm going to fill the nose in as well. OK. And then we also are going to fill this bottom thing here with the face. And that face isn't really going to be planar. So I'm going to insert a point. Insert point, actually, what insert point is, it doesn't really insert a point if you select two points and it, it, it selects an edge, which is what I'm doing here. So I cut this semi-quad into two triangles. And again, for what we're doing here, that's fine. So let's see if this converts now. Now it doesn't convert. So let's get back to here, close the error out, and go to utilities, wrong utility, utilities, repair body, and see if that does anything for us. And I shouldn't actually play around with the mouse because redrawing these numbers here is usually pretty slow. All right, so now it converts. And if I would click on Finish Form Now, it would convert into something desperately ugly. So let's edit that T-spline again. OK, there we are. So now we would have to crease all the edges. end up with our fully creased model, with our hard-edged hard model, I should, I should say. You basically need to crease all edges. That are in your model to get to that sort of look. All right, I think that's it. That looks like it. And my mouse is flipping out again. All right, so, oops. Let's just see if it converts now. And now it converts. And now we have this hard edge look. And the problem, of course, that's you know not necessarily desirable. And also, these faces, they're not exactly flat. They're slightly curved. Um, and that's also maybe not uh, 
not what we want, but what, how can we soften these hard edges? Now we can fillet them. No, not this one, this one, this one, this one. And that's going to be an interesting juncture because these are here all convex and that is kind of concave. So give, let's, let's give that two millimeters. And uh, of course, if you use a constant radius, they are all, they are all of, a, of a different width. So we're going to use the short fillet. And well, that doesn't look exactly great. And of course, this is just a few of the edges that we selected. You'd have to select all these edges here to get that smooth. Maybe play with fillet size and so forth. So that's going to be pretty horrendous. Um, and I'm afraid that also is not going to work. So they're not going to be, they're just going to be tangent fillets. They're not going to be G2. Uh, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, G2 meaning, meaning curvature continuous. Continuous. Anyway, so this is one method, right? Let's delete that fillet again. So method number one is creasing everything. And sometimes this works, it does in this case, but in very many cases, it actually fails. So what's the next method that we can use? So let's go back into the uh, sculpt edit mode. And again, Fusion is being stupid and doesn't respond to my double click. So here we are. And in that mode, you can actually find your T-spline body in the browser, right click and select save control frame as OBJ. And I've kind of I kind of done that already. And give it another name and save, replace. Okay. And now I've exported this body here as a mesh. OBJ is a mesh format. So let me finish the form and open a new design. Delete the timeline, and now I'm going to insert that OBJ mesh. And that is my low poly head. And I think we may have to rotate it this way to get it back to the original position. It's a little odd, but that's okay. So here's our mesh. And what we can do now, right click, oh, left click on the mesh and select mesh to be red. And there we go. So now you have your hard edged poly look. And we can see this. This looks different from here because here it's broken on every face that's not flat, that's slightly con concave or convex, is now triangulated. So that might, might be what you want, but it also might not be what you want. Either way, this is probably also easier to fill it um, because these are much simpler surfaces that are created now goes very quick but also doesn't exactly look great of course that's a matter of taste so this is uh, th those are the two ways to create uh, hard edged poly polygon models in fusion 360 i actually prefer this exporting the obj uh, much over this one here because again sometimes uh, creasing all the edges works, but sometimes it doesn't. You can crease all the edges and then it just doesn't convert into a B-Rep, right? Into a solid body, B-Rep. So the problem is, what is it, what you want to do? If, what would you do if you needed these edges rounded, if you want that all a little smoother? Hard edge, but maybe with, you know, rounded edges. What would you do? How would you do that in Fusion 360? Well, you could fill it in, as I said, but you really wouldn't. For that, I would do this in Blender. Now, and I'm mentioning Blender quite often because Blender is free and open source software. It's very powerful. We'll see that in a moment. So I'm going to hide the tool shelf, delete the default cube, and switch into orthogra orthographic mode. And then I'm going to insert or import that OBJ. So it's on my desktop, and that was the this one here, I believe. And it's a little too big, so I have to, on the screen at least, so I have to change this into millimeters. It is already changed into millimeters now, right? And 
and that's 107, 165 millimeters. Okay, that that sounds like reasonable sizes. Uh, this is, after all, a real project that, that I believe will be 3D printed. So this is our mesh, right? And I make sure that all the face normals are switched around the correct way. So where do I see this? Normals. I don't even know how to do this anymore, how to turn the face normals on. Either way, that's okay. We don't need this right now. So as, as we can see, this is the mesh as imported from Fusion 360, and it looks very similar to this appearance here. All right, so now we want to smooth this over. So in, in a Blender, I would actually go to the modifier stack and apply a modifier. In this case, I play, apply a subdivision surface modifier. And Catmull Clark makes things round, if you will. Um, so I'm going to use the simple modifier. And it, uh, it may not appear at first what this does. So I'm going to shift this, uh, to turn the wire display on, on, on that uh, body. Switch back to the uh, modifier stack. And if I undo this, you can see this is the original mesh. And it turns it, 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 it turns in red here because I really haven't done anything. So now I have subdivided it. Of course, that's still hard edged, but we can see that uh, Blender, that, that modifier, is basically everything that's a triangle is now a quad. It's selected everything that's there and made it a quad. Cool. Uh, could you do this in Fusion 360? Yes, but you'd have to do that manually using basically either insert edge or insert point and a combination. So you'd have to insert each edge manually. And you'll admit that is very cumbersome. And also, it wouldn't be non-destructive. This is non-destructive. I can delete that modifier, and it's back to the original. So let's do that again. Also, right when I edit this mesh, I'm back to the old mesh. So I can edit the mesh, and that modifier is dynamic. So I said we wanted this rounded, so now I'm going to just simply apply another modifier, a subdivision surface modifier, and um, turn the tool shelf on and set this to smooth display. And just so we see a little better how this looks like, I'll turn this off and turn Matte cups on and give that a shiny appearance, and here it is. So this is still, this might be a little bit too round. If you want this more hard edged, you can now, sorry, increase the simple subdivision surface modifier. And it's hard edged, but, but with really, really smooth, well, I wouldn't call them fillets. They're really G2 curvature continuous continues across that entire surface, uh, which makes it look so really smooth and shiny. And what I said earlier, this is fully um, this is fully dynamic, right? Meaning you can edit this mesh and yeah, I haven't done that, but there's also a mirror modifier in Blender, so I can have it automatically mirror just like in Fusion 360 but this is fully dynamic. So if you would want this back in Fusion 360, you could actually do so. So let me undo these changes. And we don't need this modifier. This second sub subdivision surface modifier would basically show, it, show us the mesh in that same smoothness that we have it uh, in Fusion 360. So I'll delete this, and then I'm going to export this mesh, this, body's, uh, this body mesh, also as a .obj. And I want the selection only, the selected object. I don't need the materials, and I keep everything as the same. 
I'm going to call, call this uh, AS, select the desktop, give it this name, export it, and now I'm going to go back into Fusion 360 and open up another file, also turn off the timeline there, and insert that mesh. And there it is. Okay, turn this around, right click on it and click convert. And that converts it, converts this quad mesh. Remember, that modifier in Blender makes a quad mesh, even if they're a triangle in the original mesh makes a quad mesh out of it. And I click OK and here's my T-spline. And um, now, with this in place, if you decide that um, Remember, when I, I turned the timeline off earlier, so in, in the timeline, you actually have to switch into sculpt. Uh, with the, when the timeline is off, you have to actually switch into sculpt mode to sculpt anything. So in this case, if you want to have a more smooth appearance here, you can modify this quite fine in Fusion 360. Um, maybe you want to turn symmetry on first. Then you can, um, if you want these faces more round, you can now perfectly fine modify those in Fusion 360. And also, what you can do in Fusion 360, there is a um, there's another menu here. Soft modification, and there you can change the influence, the size of influ influence. You can see how those pixels uh, or these vertices highlight in red. So you can slide around this uh, the slider change the circle of influence, so to speak, and then modify, apply the smooth modification modifier, so to speak. So I undo that, and this is, uh, this is your smooth T-spline, and now, hopefully, this explanation helped you a little in trying to model this in, uh, in Fusion 360, and maybe with a little bit of help in Blender. But even if you're not comfortable in Blender, you just have to apply that one modifier and export it and re-import it into Fusion 360 to end up with this as a T-spline. And this is now fully quad, uh, fully quadrified T-spline. So hopefully this helps.